Hello and welcome to Business Standard. Here's a glimpse of the views expressed on the web pages of Business Standard this week. Shekhar Gupta in his weekly column National Interest takes a look at Modi government's predicament on its farm reform laws. The resistance to the farm laws is a setback if not an outright defeat or surrender, writes Gupta. This is tragic because these laws are reformist and bold and would help farmers by and large rather than harm them. So what went wrong? For the most part, if Modi's dispensation wasn't so overconfident, if there was still a culture of his political aids and bureaucracy intervening with some counsel and caution, the predicament over the farm laws could have been avoided. There was a need for persuasion, nudging and preparing the ground. You can neither beat up the farmers into submission nor dismiss them as Khalistanis. It is from this lack of patience, non-understanding the limits of personal popularity in Punjab that we face this looming disaster over farm laws, Gupta writes. Shaman Majumdar takes a look at what led to the shutdown of homegrown messenger app Hike in a column for Business Standard. Hike had a great start as it attracted 100 million users in its first four years. Majumdar says the problem was that Hike tried to imitate the success of China's WeChat. Hike integrated games, a mobile wallet, and more than 20,000 online stickers on its platform. Hike tried to be what's called a super app. Hike also targeted the under 20 age group, which is not ideal for monetization. Soon growth stagnated and put pressure on the firm's finances. Essentially, Hike spread itself too thin and the app can be a classic case study of why a company should first identify its core area and then focus on it relentlessly. The lesson to be learned from all this is that business can't be about taking flights of fancy when you're dealing with investor money, Majumdar writes. Mahesh Vyas breaks down the flow of jobs from high productivity sectors to those of low productivity in his weekly column for Business Standard. Vyas says that the services sector took a big hit in the lockdown. Employment in retail trade, travel and tourism, education and personal services took the biggest hits during the June 2020 quarter. By December, most of these services sector job losses had recovered, except education, where job losses continue to mount. Recovery in the manufacturing sector has been modest at best. Meanwhile, agriculture saw its employment share rise from a steady 36% between 2016 and 2019 to nearly 40% in 2020. Also, the real estate and construction industry has seen a near complete recovery in terms of employment. It seems jobs have moved from those sectors that have high labor productivity, such as manufacturing and services, to those with low productivity, such as in agriculture and construction, Vyas writes. In his column for Business Standard this week, TN Nainan writes that the Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative is a recognition of the fact that the country is not capable of developing its manufacturing sector without trade protection and tariff walls. He points out that if India does build manufacturing into a bigger component of GDP, it will be oriented towards the domestic market and will be high cost probably. The story to compensate for this will come from services, he writes. While globally, trade in services is a third of merchandise trade, in India's case, the ratio is nearly double that. He says that even conventionally defined services exports may in about five years account for the lion's share of India's export basket. This will be unique for an economy at India's stage of development and will also prop up the rupee to a level where manufactured exports become even more outpriced, Nainan writes. In a column for Business Standard, Mihir Sharma underlines the need for the government to deal with the budget with sense and restraint. For this, Mehra identifies six steps. First, India must return to full-scale, transparent privatization. Second, it must make all its borrowing as transparent as possible. Third, it must prioritize the inflow of global capital. Fourth, it must resist the temptation to go all out on welfare schemes as targeting the right people is hard during a pandemic. Fifth, ignore what the West is doing, whether it's treasuries or central banks. Lastly, remember that institutions matter. The RBI's independence, particularly when it comes to managing the government's debt and its inflation targeting, is an asset and must not be diluted. Sharma concludes by saying that using the pandemic as an opportunity to find alternative sources of development finance for India and to make it more investment friendly would be smart. The controversy over Amazon's web series standoff allegedly hurting religious sentiments and the arrest of comedian Munawar Fariki are instances of politically aware Hindus looking for imagined offences from Muslims, writes V. Sangvi in a column for Business Standard. Sangvi asks, can it be a coincidence that all of the complaints came from people with BJP links? That the two governments 
involved Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh are run by the BJP, that so many of the alleged offenders are Muslims. It's not just Faruqi. Tandav has been created and directed by Ali Abbas Zafar. The actor whose dialogues they are objecting to is called Muhammad Zishan Ayub. It seems politicians are reminding Hindus how the government will work to protect them. It's a model that helped Muslim politicians keep their followers distracted. And sadly, it's a model that now seems to be working for some Hindu politicians, Sangvi writes. Investors should not lose sight of fundamentals in the middle of a roaring market rally, Business Standard writes in an editorial. The Sensex achieved a milestone on Thursday as it crossed the 50,000 mark before profit booking pulled it down. The optimism is based on the anticipation of good third quarter corporate results and the introduction of market-friendly measures in the upcoming budget. But the disconnect between the market sentiment and the real economy that's limping back to normalcy is stark. There will be an earnings bump through the next two quarters due to the contraction experienced during the lockdown that should lead to double-digit growth year-on-year given the base effect. But these valuations seem excessive as demand is still weaker than normal and the economy will grow back to around December 2019 levels only by the end of the next fiscal year, the editorial says. Business Standard in an editorial takes a look at the challenging note Joe Biden's presidency in the US starts on. Soon after inauguration, Biden got down to work swiftly, signing some 17 orders, many of which undid Trump's policies on immigration, affordable care, the environment, employment, and the economy. While the Democrats control both houses of Congress, the lead in the House of Representatives is slender, and the Senate is evenly divided, with Vice President Kamala Harris holding the deciding vote as Speaker. One of the first pieces of Senate business is Trump's second impeachment trial. That outcome will determine the extent of political polarization under Biden. Trump demonstrated that the US was an unreliable ally and he has done much to discredit the White House globally. From that new low, the task before Biden, the oldest president to hold office, will be to make America great, the editorial says. The leaked WhatsApp messages allegedly between Republic TV's Arnab Goswami and Partho Dasgupta, the former CEO of TV ratings agency Bark, have raised serious questions about the equation between the government and the news channel Business Standard writes in an editorial. The messages show that after the Pulwama attack in 2019, Goswami tells Dasgupta that something big would happen against Pakistan and that it would be bigger than a normal strike and it would be such that people would be elated. Three days later, India bombed an alleged terror camp in Balakot. The messages also hinted at something major on Kashmir. And five months later, the state was stripped of its special powers and split into two. The evidence, if true, is remarkable and warrants an impartial investigation. The nation needs to know if Goswami had access to critical inside information and state security secrets, the editorial says. The government is reportedly considering cleaning up the balance sheets of public sector banks by moving the bad loans to a so-called bad bank. Business Standard in an editorial explains why this is a bad idea. A big reason for bad loans in public sector banks is poor lending standards. Forming a bad bank will not solve this fundamental problem. Also, bankers in the public sector are reluctant to recognize bad loans because they can be held against them by investigating agencies. A bad bank established by the government will face the same problem. Besides, the valuation of assets transferred to a bad bank will remain contentious. Transfer of assets at high valuations will impair the incentive for due diligence. Public sector banks need wider reforms that let them function and compete freely in the market. A bad bank would perhaps only be used to kick the can down the road, the editorial says. The disruption caused with the pandemic is a great opportunity to restructure taxation, Business Standard says in an editorial. The original promise of the GST was it's an easy to pay revenue neutral simple single tax, but it has been hampered by the reduction of an excessive number of slabs and various forms of paperwork. The government should give a clear signal of the direction it plans to take GST in order to repair it. Direct taxes have also been hurt by recent policy actions. For example, the promise to lower and simplify corporate income tax has not been followed in spirit. While the headline rate has been lowered, there continue to be exceptions of various sorts on offer and personal income tax covers too few Indians with the threshold at 5 lakh rupees. As economies develop, they have to increase their reliance on direct taxes, particularly income taxes. The government must seize the opportunity provided by the current moment to restructure its approach to taxes, 
the editorial says. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.